Hey folks, so what we have here today is a Schlage wafer lock. Uh, these were introduced by uh, the Schlage company in around 1926 or so, at least that's the earliest patent date I can find for them. Um, this was uh, basically designed by Schlage uh, as a way to make a key-in knob uh, cylindrical lock set. Uh, because at the time, uh, pin tumbler mechanisms were still a bit bulky and, a uh, bit more importantly, couldn't fit through, uh, the amount of space in, left in that spindle. Uh, because, uh, let's see, do I have a Schlage cylinder? Yeah. So here's a Schlage cylinder. There is the spindle, they're about the same size, so, or actually a little bit larger. So Schlage could have saved themselves a lot of trouble and just gone with a thicker spindle, but uh, they didn't want to do that for whatever reason. Uh, there are some very interesting things uh, about the way that this lock is constructed, uh, and also this mechanism is somewhat unique. I am not aware of anyone else ever copying this design. Uh, you generally will not see these very often anymore. They've been out of production for probably about 40 years at this point, uh, and they are not terribly secure, but they do hang around in places where they've survived. Basically, uh, if they have survived this long, they're probably going to survive a, a while yet. Um... Uh, I do have a latch fitted to it. Uh, this weird extension thing is here because of the fact that uh, these are a bit shorter than the back set that my display board is drilled for. So I uh, end up having to fit an extension. Don't worry about that. Just, uh, you know, if I do actually manage to get the cylinder picked, uh, you'll see the latch retract like that. Um, but let's get on with this so that I don't waste a lot of your time waiting for me to do the teardown at the end. So I'm going to try uh, putting, I'm going to try this with the pry bar and a Bogota style rake. So rake on one side, rake on the other. And we've got some things sticking now. Oh, and there we go. You can see the latch is retracting. We've got that turned 90 degrees. And if this were the door, we'd have it open. So, you know, not terribly high security. And let's take a look at what's actually going on inside there. Get the picks out of the way. So here we have the inside bolt, and what we need to do is there's a little wire catch right here. So we need to hold that down while we lift this rosette, this outer rosette away. There we go. So we've got that off, and we also need to depress this little catch here, which hopefully you can make out. Ah, did not want to snap that back on, but okay. So there we have the inside knob taken off. This uh, little thumb turn here is what keeps the, is what uh, allows you to lock and unlock the outer knob. So right now, outer knob doesn't work. Turn, and so it pops out, and now the outer knob can turn. Let's get that rosette off again. So here you can see the uh, wire catch. There's a little uh, notch right here that helps us pull it off. And there we have the rosette off, and now you can see the entire uh, inner spindle and the inner rosette 
And now we need to get this off. This has two large, rather long flathead screws. So to speed this up, uh, we're going to get the drill out. And a low torque. And let's see if I can do this without knocking the camera over. There we go. That's one screw out. So now we have the inner rosette off. This is just a piece of stamped sheet metal. And really, uh, one thing that you'll notice as we take this apart is that pretty much everything is actually stamped sheet metal in here. There's very little in the way of milled uh, metalwork. There is a ton of metal stampings uh, and just sort of crimped edges and things. Uh, so now we can pull the knob off, and we can also extract the latch, and now we can put our little piece of wood aside, and let's get this uh, back in frame. All right, so here we have the latch and the extension. The extension is very simple. It's just a rounded tube, or it's just a tube. Uh, with some uh, crimped in bits on the edges and on one end and just a long, there's a long spring in the center there. Very simple mechanism and actually uh, there are still a lot of uh, a lot of locks uh, usually grade two and grade one uh, higher quality locks uh, that still use essentially the same uh, the same basic mechanism for interfacing with a latch. Uh, so this actually is a later example of the Schlage wafer latch design because it is uh, a dead latch. A lot of the ones that I've seen actually still in use uh, use a non-deadlocking latch. Um, so if you do have one of those on your door that doesn't have this little uh, piston, uh, definitely make sure you always use your deadbolt. Uh, you can also see the old Schlage logo, which is another thing that you'll find very commonly with these. Uh, so now we have the knob here, and we have the actual central locking unit, the outer rosette. Uh, you can see there's a screw thread there on the outer spindle and that just screws on. Uh, now next step here is we, in this case we have this little uh, wire pin that we need to get out of the way. So we're just going to bend that in a little bit and pull. There we go, we can set that aside. Uh, now we can take this cover off. Sometimes it sticks on this catch. There we go. So we've got it out and then it will stop. That's because there are these little punched in plates here. So we need to turn it uh, about 25 degrees and then it will come free. So this is what the those two long screws actually get secured to. And there is the entirety of the inner spindle. There's really not much to the inner spindle. Uh, you have the uh, thumb turn. You have this catch. This uh, bit here is just a wire spring that keeps that catch uh, biased outwards. And we're going to take this off. We have to push these two tabs away and pull up on this tab here. And we have to be fairly careful because once we do that, 
Yeah, those springs are going to try to go shooting out, which they did. So this is the actual latch retriever. It just has, and this is actually just two pieces of sheet metal. There's one, and there's two, crimped together. And that holds those two springs in place. And the body just has these two crimped in pieces that keep the uh, spring centered. So there is the, uh, there's a plate here, and here's the entire body of the inner, uh, the inside uh, spindle. And then this whole arm here that you can see is uh, part of the thumb turn mechanism. But you'll notice uh, nowhere is there a spring in here. Uh, so now we have the rest of the frame here, and we have the back of the uh, outside knob. So we're going to turn that until uh, all of these bits line up here. It'll drop in, and then we have to turn it again so we can slide it out. That's the last of the body. So now here is the uh, outside knob and spindle. Uh, this knob here is crimped on. You can't, it's not really designed to be removed from the spindle, but how do we get the uh, plug of the lock out? Well, once this whole thing is disassembled, you can really just basically push on the front and wiggle it around a bit. And here is the plug of the lock. Uh, now, in terms of, in the Schlage wafer system, that's actually referred to as the frame. Uh, and you can see why. It's, again, just a couple of pieces of uh, stamped sheet metal that are held together. You can see there's a couple tabs there and a couple tabs there, and this piece is just formed around them. And then there's this uh, press fit uh, sheet metal cap, also very thin brass. That's really uh, to give it a nice outside finish to match the finish of the uh, knobs. This whole spring and plunger arrangement is uh, where the spring that pushes the So that spring is what actually keeps the uh, thumb turn uh, under spring pressure and keeps it locked in place. And these are the wafers. Now, Schlage wafer, uh, again, uses a rather unusual system. These are the keys, and you can tell they already look kind of funky. Uh, but what happens is you'll notice that in here we have some uh, wafers that are already fully retracted and some that are sticking out. And that is intentional because with the correct key, uh, what will happen is those wafers that were already retracted will stay retracted. The wafers that were standing proud will be pulled in to the frame and then that would allow the frame to turn. If we take the wrong key, let's see, I think this is the wrong key. I hope this is the wrong key. No, that looks like the same key. Yeah, somewhere around here I had uh, some other... Oh, maybe this is it. Yes, here we go. Here is a different Schlage wafer key uh, that is not something that's in use. So we'll just run that in there, and you'll notice 
Now that this, watch this wafer, the second wafer from the right. So when we stick the key in, it actually gets pushed out. And basically that is why, that is how the Schlage wafer system works. You have some wafers that require uh, there to be a cut, which allows them to stay retracted. So those wafers that uh, are already retracted, those correspond to the cuts on the key. The wafers that uh, need to be pulled into the frame, those uh, correspond to where there is no cut. And then this long cut on the tip is what interacts with this uh, wafer. This is called the master wafer, and it has a special shape to accommodate the tip of the key. So this is actually an original uh, wafer, Schlage wafer keying kit. Uh, so you have the master wafer. Uh, you only ever use one of those, and it goes in the very uh, end of the frame, where the tip of the key would be. Uh, and then you have the series wafer and the combination wafer. Uh, the combination wafer is the one that uh, is normally pulled inward or into the uh, into the frame, and the series uh, tumbler is the one that stands proud and needs to be pulled in. And then you have these springs. These are there's not much special about them. I mean, they are uh, steel springs, uh, which would have been fairly common at the time. Uh, and really the only thing that's particularly remarkable about them is the fact that they are uh, quite as short as they are. So if you look at the geometry of these uh, wafers, you can see how they work. This little uh, pointy bit uh, on each end is where the spring uh, sits. And so you can see this uh, wafer, uh, the spring would be pushing it away from that tab, uh, whereas on the series wafer, uh, the spring would be pushing it outward uh, so, that, uh, so that tab would be sticking out. And that's really about all there is. Uh, master keying these basically uh, just means uh, adding uh, more and more of these combination wafers. Uh, and so the master key ends up being really the closest thing uh, you'll see in a relatively modern uh, lock design to a skeleton key where almost the entire key will be cut away, except for maybe one position uh, where there will be an actual series tumbler. Uh, other times you'll find that uh, people have simply taken uh, entire wafers out, and so you'll end up with a frame where maybe only half of these slots are filled. Uh, if you do uh, have one of these on your door and you do need it repaired, uh, I am fully kitted out to do this, and I am a licensed locksmith, so I will, uh, I will uh, do my best to uh, fix them up for you. Uh, otherwise, uh, check out uh, Fondren Lock, uh, SE Lock and Key in Fondren, uh, which is Jacksonville, uh, Mississippi, or Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, Jason Meeks there uh, also has all of this equipment and uh, really uh, knows his stuff, and uh, he will probably also be putting out a video on these in the not-too-distant future. Uh, so hopefully uh, this was interesting to everyone, and uh, until next time, have fun and happy picking.